this is Yu and Min, your guide today for our Ulsan tour. Come along as today we'll enjoy Ulsan's wonderful delicacies and sights. What kind of place is Ulsan? Located in Southeast Korea, Ulsan is one of Korea's seven big cities at a population of about 1.2 million and an area 1.7 times of that of Seoul, the largest area of all Korean cities. Bordering the East Sea, Ulsan has an annual average temperature of 14 degrees Celsius, giving it a warm climate with ideal conditions for all four seasons. As a blessed city, Ulsan grew rapidly since the 1960s when it was nominated by the country as an industrial sector. Mountains run across Ulsan with various high rise peaks such as Mountain Gohan, Gaji, Jaya, Kanor, Shimbul, or Yongchuk acting as curtains, and the Tewa River, which starts atop Mountain Pegun, flows into the East Sea. Downstream Tewa is home to what was known as Samsan Plain, which is now downtown Ulsan. Dongcheon Stream, which flows south from Gyeongju, joins the Tewa as it flows into Ulsan Bay. Tewa was once contaminated due to the rapid industrial growth of the 60s, but intensive care through water quality improvements and ecosystem reconstruction has allowed the Tewa to become Korea's biggest reservation for migrating birds, along with Tewa's designation as a national park. Let's visit Ulsan's western border. There are nine mountains, each towering over 1,000 meters above sea level, providing a sight so amazing that it has been dubbed the Yongnam Alps. Also, Ulsan has the most beautiful ocean in all of Korea. It is also home to whales, an animal quite rare in Korea. Taewangam, a magnificent and beautiful stone island in the middle of the sea housing a queen's grave is also here in Ulsan. the sun rises first in Korea, it is here in Kanjargot. Annually, many people come to Kanjargot to wish for a plentiful year. Ulsan 
Pompeii is rich in industrial waters, and with a sturdy foundation, it is the perfect place for an industrial sector. Ulsan Bay is the nation's number one export bay, along with others of various scales. Let's have a sneak peek at the places we'll visit today with a short video. Next, let's look at Ulsan's history. Ulsan's fertile land and warm climate was acknowledged in Joseon's ancient records, providing that it was a great place to live in. It has been a favored settlement since prehistory, with people coming in from land and sea. Historically, some claim to have seen two cranes flying with a golden statue near Ulsan, thus giving Ulsan the nickname of Haksang. Ulsan has famous prehistoric sites, which are the stone drawings of Cheonjeonri and Daegongmi. Asian tribes lived along the coastline and settled into Ulsan. All the drawings of everyday life, wishes, and animals, such as whales, were common at that time. There are also geometrical figures, such as trapezoids, squares, and circles, that make these sites mysterious. The meanings are still unclear to these days. Stone formations that have existed since much before human life have given insight into the history of Earth and mankind. Unlike Cheonjeonri, which contains traces since prehistory and the age of dinosaurs until the age of writing, Daegongri shows the lives of our ancestors near the dawn of the Bronze Age. Have you ever heard of Ulsan's traditional mythology? The myth is about Ulsan's guardian, which has now taken place as a major festival wishing Ulsan luck and prosperity. According to the tale, the son of the sea god Choyung first came to land on a small rock island south of Ulsan. The island was later named Choyungam and designated as a natural treasure of Ulsan. Let's take a closer look into the myth of Choyung as recorded by Korea's Asian record Samgung Yusa. Near the end of Shilla, the king was resting by the seaside when a sudden flurry of clouds and fog disoriented him. It was then that he realized that it was from the sea god and bowed down to him. The god was pleased. He sang and danced with his seven sons, one of whom came to the capital to aid the king. This son is Choyung, and has received a beautiful wife and high rank from the king. While he was living happily with his wife, Choyung returned home to find an infectious disease in the form of demon. Choyung sang a song to the demon, who made a promise to never enter his house again. 
Since then, there is a tradition of hanging a portrait of Choyung on the front door of houses in hopes that bad spirits stay away. Today, Ulsan holds a festival honoring Choyung and wishing good luck to its constituents. The drawing Night Banquet depicts a Joseon tradition where people would gather around a large pot containing a broth and various ingredients, including beef. As such, Korean's love for meat has a long history. Onyang bulgogi is a traditional food of Onyang in Ulsan, which gained fame during 1960s when the highway connecting Seoul and Busan was built. Construction workers working in the area tasted the meat and spread word. Soon it spread through the area via the newly constructed highway. Onyang bulgogi, unlike others, has a tradition of using meat from only cows slaughtered in 24 hours, which is said to give a taste different from any other beef, giving the bulgogi and its beef the current popularity. Korea has several ways of cooking beef, and bulgogi is its most famous known around the world. But do you know there are various ways of preparing bulgogi? There are two major versions, with the first being cooked in a broth and the second being dry cooked, such as onyang bulgogi. Let's take a closer look at the bulgogi as it cooks. is also known for adding various foods to meals. With meat, other foods such as beef tartare, cold noodles, kimchi, and various sauces come together to form a plentiful table. Here come our meal! Bon Appetit!
In Korea, there's a saying, first we eat, then we sightsee. Thus, a beautiful scenery is incomplete without a good meal. Now that we have eaten, let's go to Ulsan's famous sites. This right here is Tewa River National Park. There are over 20 themed parks with six different themes. Ecosystem, bamboo, seasons, water life, inclusion, and flower. They are especially famous for the bamboo forest and their vast diversity of flora. Okay, come with me. Let's enjoy the cool winds of the Tehua. the popular Shimni bamboo forest. It gets its name from the fact that the forest spans about 4 kilometers or Shimni with over 500,000 bamboo plants. Let's enter the cool bamboo forest. the bamboo forest becomes a starry path. Aren't the galaxies spaced between the bamboo just splendid? Also, the Tehua River flowing next to the forest provides a stunning night scene. Now let's visit the Onyang Alps Marketplace. It's a place where Korea's traditional markets come together with tasty snacks. This peculiar item is a frog. To be specific, it's a dried frog. Isn't it interesting? Many delicious fruits are also out for sale. Along with grass bread and various fish, the Onion Alps Marketplace is teeming with various foodstuffs. Let's take a look around.
This here is Ulsan Museum. Let us examine the stories it contains. Around 1,400 years ago, Ulsan was a city of Silla during the Three Kingdoms era. With highly developed trade and iron forging, Ulsan was a center for trade in Silla. As mentioned before, Ulsan was an early settlement of Korea. So, there are many prehistoric sites here. Bordering the sea, Ulsan grew rapidly thanks to the trade. In this museum, we can see various iron items, horse saddles, and decorations. The scene is that of Ulsan Bay and the harbors of Ulsan. Have you ever heard of Korea's rice wine? There are many types of alcohol in Korea. Out of those, rice wine is Korea's pride and loved by so much it has been dubbed Korean wine. Rice wine is made with diverse ingredients depending on the region, containing not only local specialties but also the local sentiment and taste. Rice wine mainly uses rice. Since rice takes a full year to grow, the taste of rice is vital to the rice wine. Differences in rice cultivation is the main reason why each region's rice wine is different. Now let's harvest rice for our rice wine.
The harvested rice is prepared in bags and cooked in traditional way. As the rice cooks, it provides a flavorful rice wine. The well done rice is now cured with the malt. Can you see the wine ripen? The wine is now fermented in a storage chamber for around a week. According to the corporation, there are different ways of fermentation. Some places start daily, while others take a term of two or three days. This process can once again differentiate the taste of the rice wine. Rice wine takes shorter to ferment, while soju and clear lurs spirits take longer. Let's make rice wine together! How to make the rice wine? First, wash the rice. Second, cook the rice and make it dry. Cool the rice and put it into the container. Fourth, add malt and water and mix them all together.
seal the container. And finally, ripen it for a week. Now our rice wine is finished. It's very simple. In Boksundoga, you can make your own rice wine. Self-made rice wine is not only refreshing but also satisfying. Have a taste. What you see here is malt. It plays an essential role in making of rice wine. It can also alter the flavor of the rice wine. Boksundoga is loved for its great malt. Here you can experience the making process. Let's look how rice wine is made. You can also try the fermented wine. The soju rice wine and the traditional medicinal spirits all look very delicious. Ulsan's Soldo Island is a rock island that blocks the harsh waves coming into Ulsan. It earns its name from the fact that the wind and waves crashing into the island creates a harp sound. Soldo also has many nicknames. It is called Shirusam for its unique shape and Kumbusam for its unique rock formations. It is a beloved walking and day course and it is close to Ulsan's downtown.
Guangdong has a famous landmark, a statue that depicts a whale along with the music-like sound that it is known to make. In Seoul, there are many pretty cafes. What about a cold drink with me while watching the beautiful oceans of Seoul? There are also tasty seafood fresh from the seas of Seoul. In the 1970s, Ulsan's Changsengdu was filled with people trying to catch whales. However, after overfishing caused catch rates to fall and some species to go endangered. The international community banned commercial whale fishing and the town lost its population dedicated to the job. This town of Ulsan has since transformed into a tourist site with a retro vibe giving the people a place to reminisce the past. Let's experience the life of those before us here. When whale fishing was popular, it was a major source of revenue which made towns very prosperous. Ulsan is also rich with nice cafes with a pleasing ocean view. Out of these, Heimer is the most famous. Just the view itself is cool and relaxing. If you are curious about what Ulsan looks like, don't forget to check on Ulsan Bridge Observatory. Here is a place to overlook all of Ulsan and its industrial complexes and the skyline of Ulsan.
it's about time for us to get hungry again. This Ulsan cafe is called Nonaduri. It is famous for its netting night view. Let's relax with a tasty cake and a nice drink. What a special place to enjoy the night ocean and appreciate nature. This place is Hawaiian style Hawaiian shrimp truck. You can experience Hawaiian food while feeling as if you're really in Hawaii. The owner of this restaurant actually ran a shrimp food truck in Hawaii before. You can enjoy Hawaiian style shrimp dishes here. This place does not only serve normal shrimp fruits, a variety of shrimp dishes from garlic shrimp, hot shrimp, and bio shrimp are always ready. Eating and talking. Please visit Hawaiian Shrimp Food Truck. Next food to taste is Kanjargut Sun Bread. Many celebrities already visited here to eat this Ulsan's local food. Inside the sun is a custard cream or red bean paste. <music> the 
Now it's time to take a look at some bread. Let's open up this package. Have this bread together with coffee. This bread full of custard cream goes well with coffee. Now you're going to taste Hemaji abalone. Abalone is well known to Korean as an expensive, healthful ingredient. It is called a beef of the ocean. Try this abalone, tteokbokki, hot pot rice with various side dishes. This hot pot rice tastes the best when eaten as durungji, which is the crust of the overcooked rice. You will enjoy eating and mix with this seasoning and wrap it up with the seaweed lever. You can also smell the deep oceanic scent in this abalone tteokbokki. Don't forget to try cold abalone raw fish soup. Enjoy lots of abalone dishes! Giant sea eel. Have you ever heard of this before? In Korea, sea eel is cooked in many different ways. Though it's best to cook the live sea eel if you want to taste the chewy, delicious sea eel.
아이들이 살아있기 때문에 딸로 나도 이래 아이 징그럽게 We also enjoy just cooked sea eel, dipping it in salt and sesame oil or together with vegetables. It looks very yummy. I also cannot stop drooling. Now, why don't we try sea eel roasted with red pepper paste? Do you think this live moving sea eel is gross? But its texture is good and also it is good for our health. Korean love fried rice. After finishing up the sea eel, stir fried rice with leftover sauces itself is an excellent dessert. Let's go on to Xinjiang Market in Ulsan. You can enjoy various fruits and vegetable dishes here at Ulsan Xinjiang Market. Let me introduce some treats at Xinjiang Market. Dokbokki, fish cake, fries, and kimbap are the most beloved street foods in Korea.
green onion pancake called pajeon here is also delicious. Cooking skill of the owner of this restaurant, who worked for 40 years, also improved the taste of pajeon. Now let's try hotdog. Hotdog, grain mixture wrapped up with well aged dough, is very delicious. <laughs> this restaurant is Handung Dumplings located in Shinjon Market. Dumplings, Mian Baoxia, seafood and vegetables with mustard sauce called Yangjang Pi and fruits are all delicious here. Daewangam, royal tomb of King Mumu, has a story that patriotic dragon named Hogugyong is living in here. It is famous for the legend that King Mumu's wife transformed into Hogugyong after her death and then went under this Daewangam. After that, people kept calling this rock Daewang Rock, and as time goes by, it is called Daewangam now. Seaside walkway from Sildo to Daewangam has lots of routes, and many people visit here to enjoy this scenery. Korea's nightscape is very beautiful. At Hamorlu, located in Ulsan, you can see and enjoy the moon. Hamorlu in Korean means tower embracing the moon. Here you can enjoy Ulsan's night skate on one side. sign that explains what Hamorlu means is also showing off the Korean beauty. Talking with ones in a nice moon-shaped place will be a good memory of the trip. The mountain ridge rising together with the dark is the Pyongyang Castle. It's a place where there is a remain of the castle that surrounded the old boundary of Ulsan. This place is also located in a high place, so it's great to see the night skate of Ulsan.
how was our trip? We have experienced Ulsan's delicious food and spectacles. It was kind of sad to travel via video, but I can't wait to meet you again. Thank you so much for spending time with me.